the only person I don't know so far, uh, I will say that I'm Rod Abraham and uh, I'm co-chair of this community, uh, the ISBO community. And I'll comment that John Howe and I have been pursuing this kind of thing one way or another for at least two decades. And uh, we started doing seminars close to 20 years ago uh, on uh, programs that we called the three S's. That's starting, surviving, and succeeding in your own business. And the, the reason being that most of us are very good at our craft, whether it's meeting planners or uh, supplying services to meeting planners, uh, we're good at our craft. But, but we're not really business managers. I was fortunate enough to be uh, an accounting major in undergraduate school, and I worked for a number of years uh, as what amounts to a business manager for an association of about uh, 28,000 people. Uh, so I was a little bit more comfortable with the with debits and credits and all those kinds of things. Uh, bottom line, uh, we think that the ISBO community uh, is the right answer for independents and other small business owners. Uh, we hope that this is going to be uh, the home that we envision. Uh, and, 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 and a message really to uh, MPI that we're trying to communicate also is that we're the decision makers um, in our organizations. That is to say that we make the decision whether we or if we have employees or whether our employees participate in fee-based functions of uh, services of MPI, maintain our membership in MPI. Uh, we also make the decisions on all kinds of business management services, software programs and uh, things of that sort. Uh, so we think we can be a self-sustaining, uh, even revenue producing uh, opportunity for MPI through opening up new avenues of sponsorship. John, uh, I'll let you talk about what your vision is, where you think we are, where we're going. Well, thank you, Rod. I'm John Howe. I'm with the law firm of Howe & Hutton uh, in Chicago and Washington, D.C. Um, our primary goal in life is uh, a lot of work with small businesses, but more importantly, with groups like MPI and other associations and those people in the meetings, uh, conventions, and trade show industry. Uh, Rod and I always sort of started our programs, as he mentioned, with a simple concept. Are you a meeting professional in business or are you a business person in meetings and conventions? And hopefully it's the latter because the first aspect of being independent means that you're playing the role of a business person. And to do that properly, that's the first objective that you look at. The other is what are you selling? You're selling your professional skills, your ability to get the job done, and to represent the interests of your clients and others. Some of you may be out there who have not really thought about where your business is going, but as Rod said, that the three S's of starting, surviving, and having a succession plan are so key. And we hope through ISBO, ISBO, Independent Small Business Owners, we're going to be able to share together ideas, thoughts, programs, current thinking, best practices, and the like. One other thing that uh, we're encouraging to be looked into by MPI is to provide certain types of services, uh, affinity programs through MPI that will give you discounts on such things as transportation, uh, package sending, uh, office supplies, and the like. Not unusual for an association to do that, but MPI has, and we've identified at least 2,000 people who are currently members of MPI 
who would qualify or we think qualify as small business owners. More importantly, we think there's a far larger number of people outside of MPI that clearly qualify in that category. We want to grow the membership of this community at the same time we're growing the membership of MPI. This is a golden opportunity. It's a long forgotten segment of the industry. It really began to grow back in the 1990s when we saw many corporations lay people off because meetings and conventions, that whole area of travel, the meetings department or the convention department, whatever it was, uh, was sometimes looked when we were doing cost cutting, uh, they would let that whole department go. And what many of those people did upon being let go, they set up their own business. Who was their first client? Their former employer. But we need to be able to advance the interest here, develop the best practices, and be able to provide a real value overall. And a lot of that value will come from sharing ideas, sharing concepts, keeping up to date, and having an opportunity to work with fellows. And remember, this is not all just meeting planners. This includes people who provide AV, who provide identification tags, whatever. That marketplace out there is huge. And so we hope that you will become an active part. You have 15 people who have dedicated a large part of their time uh, each month to working on the advisory board for this particular section, this particular community. And with that, I'm going to give you one of those volunteers who has really been steadfast and who's running uh, the so-called Long Range Planning Committee, which really now is the Short Range Planning Committee, so we can survive so that we can have a long range plan. Marianne Bobro, out in Sacramento, California, owner of her own company, an independent, both association management as well as meetings, conventions, trade shows, and the like. Marianne, getting up early in the morning is never a hard thing for you because you're normally up. We, we accuse Marianne of working 24 7, literally 24 7. Marianne. Actually, Rod calls me she who never sleeps, which is not true, but um, let's say very little. Uh, welcome, good morning. Uh, glad to be here with all of you um, and those who will later listen to it uh, via recording. I remember in the 1990s, the special interest groups, uh, which at that point, it was simply a uh, independent planner group. Uh, it did not include suppliers. And you know, fast forward to 2020, and what we're doing is we're trying to call together all small businesses as a community because we believe we can help each other. As an association management company owner, uh, I see the value of, of such collaboration. Um, as an AMC, you have multiple clients. So what you're able to provide your supplier partners is multiple clients all at one time. Um, and vice versa, you get a better benefit uh, for all of your clients uh, by using the suppliers uh, in the independent community. Um, we all are in a similar situation where our businesses are dramatically impacted. Uh, for the past month or so, we have been trying to uh, assist people, and as John House says, uh, long range uh, became what's happening in the next minute as people scramble to try to get their PPP and EIDL loans. Um, and as we, we know now, uh, that fund is drying up and, and there's a push to get more money uh, for those. One thing I found interesting was the, uh, the federal government's decision uh, description of a small business and how companies like uh, Ruth, Chris, and Shake Shop uh, took a, a large amount of that funding, um, $10 million, uh, to handle their small business. So I don't want to be that size. I, I want to be a smaller size. I want to be in a community where we all help each other. And, and that's really why I volunteer uh, for this group, uh, is because for the very longest times, I have felt that we can and should be helping each other and come together uh, to do that. We're not adversaries. We are here for you and we're here to, uh, to benefit you in any way that we can. 
Uh, with that, um, Sarah, do we have um, any audience that wants to ask questions? Um, there were no questions that were um, that were submitted. So um, if you, I think we have Christine here. I'm not sure if Christine, hi, say welcome. We're happy to have you here. Um, do you have any questions of, about um, how to leverage MPI? We'd love to know if you're a current existing member um, or a potential one. Ah, no she's questions. No okay. Questions. Well, let me, let me tell you that this is the um, inaugural session of a five-part series hosted by the ISBO. Um, this one is simply to acquaint you with who we are and to uh, let you know we're here for you and that we, um, we really um, want you to be with us if you're not a current member. Um, we suggest that you consider joining. There are some promotional aspects of uh, membership going on right now. Uh, as I say, there's a five part series and I can't remember what all of the other four are, but I do know that um, they will all have value to you. And that the one that we're doing on May 4th um, is not presented by a member of the ISBO. It's, it's being presented by a well-known uh, person from the insurance industry, uh, Lou Novick, who I've seen on various occasions, and his information is always not only valuable, but sometimes eye-opening in that uh, there are things that we didn't even know, uh, I didn't even know. And so with the assistance of John Howe, uh, we were able to get, get Lou to do our May 4th presentation on um, insurance. And I encourage all of you, whether you're a small business or not, to listen to what he has to say. He's not going to just talk about event insurance, and I don't want to steal his thunder and won't, but I certainly encourage you to listen in and to get some really, really valuable information. One thing I might add there, uh, Marianne, if I may, one thing I might add about uh, in my conversations with Lou and he and I have done programs together uh, is that he said, John, you'd be amazed at how many people in filing claims are leaving money on the mm -hmm. table. They haven't read their policies. They don't realize that there are a lot of things that they could be compensated for and their business interruption and other insurance that they have, but they've never bothered to really explore what's available to them. So not only is this gonna be eye-opening, I hope, for you and anybody else who wants to participate in the program, but it may help you get a few more bucks to help get through this very difficult time. Absolutely, John, and, and for myself, I never thought about the fact that if you lay off employees, uh, you ought to go adjust your workers' comp insurance. Uh, why are you paying for people that aren't on your payroll? Uh, so there's all kinds of insurance questions. And, and again, remember, that's just not planners. Everybody who has employees has to pay workers' comp insurance. Um, and why not uh, take advantage of any discounts that you can get? You know, we're getting auto insurance discounts or rebates based on where you are um, and you know we're we're in a situation where um, I was looking yesterday at a CNN article that um, portrayed what each state was doing when how and where and while the states are, are collaborating in smaller regional groups uh, to try to do the same thing uh, it's all over the lot. Some are already expired on their stay-at-home orders. Um, others are way into May, like California is. Uh, we have no end date so far, and our our numbers certainly would indicate that uh, that's exactly what we should do. Um, I'm as antsy as anybody to get back to work and to 
establish what, what we call the new reality. Uh, but in California, we're not even there yet. We're still in the uh, peak period. We have not peaked. Uh, we hope to peak by the end of April. And now they're saying maybe it's going to go to mid-May. Uh, I just hope we don't move so fast that uh, we bring the country back down again uh, into a, a deep depression uh, because we, we tried to overlook the disease too quickly and it comes right back to us. Uh, we all know it could come back next year. Hopefully we'll have a vaccine. Um, but for our group here, we're here to try to help you in any way answer any question you might have uh, during this time and after this time. I think we're probably going to have more questions as we try to rebuild business, um, realign uh, relationships. Uh, as we all know, the, the suppliers in our, our midst are suffering as, as badly, if not more so than we are. Um, that's going to affect everybody. It's going to affect sponsorships. It's going to affect relationships all over the place. One of the things, too, Marianne, I think to bear in mind, especially with ISBO and what we're trying to do, um, as I recall, this is National Volunteer Week. And, it is. Uh, we appreciate the people who have volunteered to assist us. And I just want to give a shout out uh, to, to Sarah, who's been sponsoring this program, providing the uh, technical wherewithal to make this happen. And so that's a very important thing that she's volunteered to do, as we have all volunteered time. Right now, a lot of us may have more time on our hands than we want, but for a lot of us too, we've got never had such demands on our time and sustaining that time as we go forward. Uh, you know, the old story is one man's disaster is another man's opportunity. And we have a lot of that that's going on out there. So one of the other things too that I think we can help you with or you can help us with is identifying those which might be a gouge, those are areas that you need to be careful about, especially as we go forward with this into this very uh, difficult time. Lots of scams out there on small businesses as to how you can get your, uh, your payroll protection plan money. Some people are saying, well, if you pay us 10%, uh, we'll get it for you, but you gotta send us a deposit before we can do that. Beware out there. We're seeing all kinds of, of scams that are directly hitting not only individuals, but hitting small businesses, which are rather desperate. And they reach out at some of these so-called opportunities only to their own detriment. So I caution you, be careful out there. Oh, I absolutely agree. Um, as you know, John, I'm, I'm quite the advocate for all forms of cybersecurity and I'm collecting things now as people get back into business. We've posted a lot of information on the ISBO community uh, about um, the current hackings that are going on, about Facebook. Um, how many quizzes can you get that's revealing your information uh, to people and the hackers are sitting waiting to take it so they can test it out on, um, you know, what was your mother's maiden name? Uh, that's one of the most common password questions that's asked. And it's just rampant on Facebook. And people have nothing better to do. They want a, a, a distraction, if you will, and they're answering these questions. So I just go tell them to delete their whole posts every time I see them, because you don't want those answers out there. Marianne, you mentioned something else too that I think is a lot of people are not aware of is that we have our own community bulletin board type of operation. You might want to spend a couple of minutes just outlining for everybody who are going to be watching this hopefully later or those on now, just how that works, uh, the type of information that's being posted, that's timely, it's up to date. Uh, today we know we, we live by minute by minute. Um, every morning I wake up and really wonder what happened overnight and find out a lot happens overnight. We're not in a static period of time, but sharing information, and you've been one of, our, one of our biggest posters of very important information to help people in this particular sector of the economy. I'm the queen of posts, apparently. <laughs> um, you're absolutely right, John. And what I have found out is I have a, a routine every day. 
So it's not that I'm so, oh my gosh, I just jumped into this. I, I jump into it every morning. I can't tell you the number of publications I read. And it's because I want to know for myself and I want to know for others as well. Uh, during this time and since we've um, started the ISBO community, um, we saw from week one where we had 10 people, uh, now we're well over 250 people and we think the potential is, is not in the hundreds but more so in the, in the thousands. But we need you all to self-identify. We need you to say, yes, I'm running a small business and I can probably take advantage of the information that's out there. We don't just um, post uh, frivolous articles. We post, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we started posting um, Nick Reed and Jeff Rasco, also board members, started posting um, uh, Ciara from Ireland, uh, was posting webinars. Uh, Tracy Judge was. Uh, these are all people very much involved in the ISBO community. And um, forgive me if I'm forgetting er, others, Sharon. Um, too many numerous to, add, to uh, recite here, but, but know that each and every one of these people is, is proactively working on your behalf uh, to do things. So when we do that, we put that information out on the community uh, for you, if we find um, a really good webinar on uh, moving to virtual conferencing. Uh, we know face-to-face -face meetings will come back, but right now is a stopgap. How much do you know about virtual? Well, you go to the ISBO community and you will find a wealth of recordings, articles, um, best practices, if you will. I'm a big fan of best practices. Um, and I also copy the, the chapter leaders when we do that because one has to remember the chapters themselves are small businesses and a lot of the information we're posting on ISBO is of value to them as well. Um, it is not a closed forum. Anybody can join and anybody can post. Uh, will it be monitored? Yes. Uh, we don't want people self-promoting because that just alienates our community. But we do want you, uh, if you find something of value, uh, to go ahead and post it. Or if you have a problem, uh, send a message to any one of us and we'll tell you yes or no. Uh, and very quickly, we're very responsive. Mary, we want you. Yes, Rod? Uh, just a suggestion, why don't, why don't you... Um, for the record, explain how one gets on that uh, board, chat room, whatever. We've sure, absolutely. Somewhere in the middle of the night, mpiweb.org became mpi.org. And most people don't know that, and they don't even know they're going to mpi.org. But in truth, you are. And then sometimes you get reconnected to the old mpiweb.org. I don't want to confuse you with that, but they're both the same thing. Uh, when you go to MPI and log in as a member, um, one of the things under the membership drop-down menu is online communities. That's where you want to go is into the online communities and then take a look at what's out there. Um, ISBO is there, chapter leaders are there, um, women in leadership. Uh, I can't tell you how many. There are people who do writing. Uh, who do education that have specialty committees out there. And these are for your value. These are for you to use and participate in and gain knowledge and uh, ideas uh, in the ISBO community. If you go there, it has discussions, it has a library. Um, I can't remember what else it has uh, off the top of my head, but there's a lot of value there. Um, articles you'll find there are from Harvard Business Review, from Forbes, uh, from uh, CDC, from WHO, from people who are providing you valuable information that you can use as you make your business decisions. And that's what we're all about. We're not about to tell you how to plan a meeting because we think you know how to do that or how to provide the services for a meeting. 
but we are here to help you uh, with a pathway through this, this pandemic so that hopefully on the other side, you will come out and you will be better and you will be better able to manage in, in the new reality that we will all live in. Well, maybe, maybe at this point, Marianne, we, uh, we might want to, we've had to spend about 30 minutes and, and sort of wrap this up so people can get back to doing what they have to do. And we just hope that this will help people understand how MPI and the, this particular community is attempting to provide you with valuable services and opportunities, and also in some respects, share the grief and share your solutions. So, Rod? Yeah, well, I, 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 I had one question that I wanted to pose to Sarah. Uh, Sarah is our, our first sponsor, and I'm curious, uh, what motivated you, Sarah, to want want to be a part of this group and, and to help support this group? Yeah, um, so I run a company called Happily, and it's the largest network of independent um, event specialists in the country. There's over 60,000 folks in our database. And um, uh, for me, uh, every day, I'm very motivated to um, helping people who are freelancers or small businesses professionalize themselves. Um, get access to top quality learning um, resources, great clients that can help them build their portfolio. And so, um, you know, we looked at a lot of uh, a lot of associations, and we do support quite a few of those. But MPI was really, you know, top of our list um, to partner with. And um, because of how strong the network is, um, how committed um, all the community members at MPI are to each other's success. Um, even on Happily, uh, we, we actually, when you're looking through people's profiles, um, we surface an MPI logo um, if they are a member because we found that um, when uh, clients or people who are building um, teams with freelancers know that our MPI members know that you are also an MPI member there, um, twice as more likely to, to hire you and bring you onto their team. So it's just a really um, influential group to be a part of. And again, access to, um, access to really great learning that is best in class within the industry. Super. Um, before we close out, John and Rod, um, I, for Christine, um, you say you're a potential member. And if you have any questions at all, please reach out to any one of us. Um, to ask about becoming a member, and we will get you to the right people. Um, we're happy to do that for you, and thank you. Um, I will say that um, every Monday for the next four Mondays after this, um, ISBO will present its series. Again, it is with different people on different topics of high relevance to what you do as a business owner. And we hope that everyone will join us. We will be marketing it on uh, the discussion group and elsewhere. Um, so I highly recommend that you join. And again, on May 4, that's going to be real key for um, anybody uh, is that whole insurance question and probably questions uh, that you never even thought to ask. John and Rod? Oh, they will, sure. everybody. And we look forward to your participation on the following Mondays, as Marianne indicated, as well as looking at the community postings and becoming a full participant in this very vital community that's going to be really important as we go forward and try to dig our way out of this morass and how we do business. I've been a proponent, it's no longer gonna be the new norm. We're dealing now with a new reality, right? Well, I just wanted to add um, uh, for Christine's benefit uh, uh, that probably the three of us should should uh, give our email addresses, our contact information. And mine is very simple. Uh, Christine, it's rod at rodabrahamgroup.com. Rod at rodabrahamgroup.com. So uh, we're, we're here to we're all in this together, and we're here to help in any way we can. Well, Rod, in that light of that, I will give mine, which is 
relatively simple as well. It's jth at howhutton.com. That's jth at howhutton.com, H-O-W-E-H-U-T-T-O-N.com, all one word, all lowercase. And mine is Miriam, M-A-R-Y-A-N-M-E, at bobroassociates.com. That's B is in boy, O, B is in boy, R, O, W, associates with an S on the end, dot com. And uh, in closing, Sarah, uh, we want to thank you very much and uh, for all that you do for us. And um, thank you for being here today and, and for the next five Mondays. And uh, do you have any closing remarks? Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And um, I'll actually be uh, speaking next week on um, virtual events and, and how to pivot to virtual events. So um, we've done quite a few of those here um, at Happily. And then even myself um, as an early producer over at TED have, have um, been exposed to thinking about how do you create content for the, the two-dimensional screen. So um, hopefully we'll see you all then. Well, we'll have to start marketing those uh, profusely because that's another hot topic. John, Rod, anything further? All right. Bye. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, audience. Thanks. Have here and in the future. And um, have a great week. Cheers. <laughs>